All right, folks, we are going to talk about section 7-4, the similarities in right triangles. Um, the first thing that we need to talk about is a vocab word called an altitude. An altitude is just another name for the height in a triangle. Um, and so this segment right here, that would be the height if we were trying to find the area of this triangle. Um, this one over here would be the height if we're trying to find the area of this triangle. Those are the altitudes. And an altitude um, is always going to be from a vertex, and it's going to be perpendicular to the opposite side of that vertex. Okay, so it's going to make a 90 degree angle with that opposite side. And so that's also what we get over here. When you take a look, I've got this vertex here. And if I extend out this bottom side, I see that my altitude is perpendicular to that bottom side of the triangle. So that's my altitude. Now, if I take that idea and I go here. Now, this is our first theorem of the day. I'm going to zoom in here a little bit. But if I'm taking a look here, I have a right triangle and I have an altitude drawn from my right angle vertex to the hypotenuse. So if I have an altitude drawn to the hypotenuse, that is going to break my big right triangle into two smaller right triangles. Okay, I've got this blue one over here, which they flipped the right angle is right here and they've flipped it around so that's facing the same way as the others and same thing here with the green one they flipped it around here's our right angle which they've moved up to here so they flipped it around but here we go we have two right triangles here and then we have the big right triangle here so now we have three right triangles it just so happens that these are going to be similar right triangles and let me show you how that works so first off if i look at the big right triangle I see that I have my right angle up there at angle C. So I'm talking about angle ACB. And down here, I've got angle A. I'm just going to mark it with a single arc. And over here, I've got angle B. I'm going to mark it with a double arc. It doesn't matter what you mark with one or two. It's just marking them differently is what, what's important. Well, if I now look at this triangle over here, I see that this angle, angle D, is my right angle. So angle ADC is my right angle. Angle A is still just angle A. And so I'm going to mark it with my single mark. Well, now, because of our triangle angle sum theorem, we know that the three angles of a triangle always have to add up to the same thing, 180 degrees. And if you, or you think about the angle angle, uh, or I'm sorry, third angles theorem, third angles theorem saying that if two angles of a triangle are congruent, then the third angle must also be congruent, then that tells us that this angle over here must be the same as that double marked angle. Angle C must be congruent to that original angle B. We can do all of that same stuff on the second triangle, the green triangle. So listen to me again. We have our right angle, angle D, and then this angle B, well, that's the same angle B as this angle B here. It's angle D, B, C. Angle D, B, C, D, B, C. It's the same angle. And so it has to be congruent because it's the same thing. Now, again, the third angle must be congruent. The third angle must be congruent. So that means angle C must be my single marked angle. Okay. So now I have my three triangles, and they are all going to be similar according to angle-angle similarity. So that's the important thing, is that if we have a right triangle with an altitude drawn to the hypotenuse, it's going to give you three, one, two, three right triangles that are all similar to each other. So I want to work a problem. I want to work a problem. Let's take a look down here. So first off, all I want to do is write a similarity statement. What similarity statement can we write relating these three triangles? I want to say that triangle one is congruent to tri or similar to triangle two, similar to triangle three. And looking at this, I have the large right triangle. So I'm just going to go ahead and name that one. I'm going to say that that is 
oops, that is triangle, let's call it uh, XYZ. Okay, so that's triangle XYZ. Now I need to name the next triangle. Well, before I do that, I'm going to mark my diagram. So the big triangle, I'm just going to take the one angle, angle Z, and mark it once. Take the other angle, angle X, and mark it twice. So now I have my right angle, a single marked angle, and a double marked angle. So there's my three angles of that triangle. So if I investigate the next triangle, um, let's see if I can highlight this one in green a little bit. So if I'm taking a look at this green triangle here, then I see that this triangle already has a right angle. It already has a single marked angle. What it's missing is a double marked angle. So there it is. And now I can say that the big triangle, triangle XYZ, notice that X was the double marked angle. So that means in the green triangle, X must be congruent to angle Y in the green triangle. Y was my 90 degree angle in the big triangle, but now W is my 90 degree angle in the green triangle. And then angle Z is still congruent to itself. It's the same angle in both triangles. So there we go. I have a similarity statement of the big right triangle to the green right triangle. And let's try it one more time because we do have one more triangle. And investigating up here, looking at this little triangle up here, I'm not even going to highlight it. Let's call it a gold triangle, a little gold triangle up here. Okay, so looking at that little gold triangle, I see that I have a double marked angle, angle X. I have a right angle sitting right there that is angle W. That's my right angle. And so that means this little angle here must be my single marked angle. Because again, these three triangles have to have the exact same three angles. And so, marking stuff now, um, again, I'm starting with my big triangle here. The big triangle, angle X, was the double marked angle. Well, that's the same angle in the gold one, so it starts with angle X. And then angle Y in the big triangle, angle Y was my right angle. Well, now in the gold triangle, my right angle is angle W. And lastly, if I have my uh, single marked angle, the only side left or only vertex left is angle Y. Angle Y is my single mark in the gold triangle. It is similar, I'm sorry, congruent. Angle Y is congruent to angle Z from the big triangle. So there is my similarity statement. Um, if they wanted me to, and they're, I'm going to want you to, um, redraw this so you have your three triangles, um, I would do this. I would just redraw the big triangle facing the same way that it's facing in the picture. So here's Z, here's Y, here's X. And now the other triangles, I'm going to have them facing the exact same way. So there would be the green triangle, and here's going to be the gold triangle. You don't have to make them perfect sized the way they are in the picture, but they need to be facing the right way. So the green triangle is triangle YWZ. W is the right angle. We can see that in my mark. Um, oops, let's mark these. This is the single mark. This was the double mark from my original picture. That helps me mark stuff on the green triangle. This is Z because I see it's the single marked angle. And so that means my double marked angle that's sitting up there must be angle Y. Again, single mark, double mark on the small triangle. And all I've got to do is match it up. My right angle is W. My single mark is angle Y. My double mark is angle X. And so now I have my three triangles that are all similar to each other. And they're all now facing the same way. So it's easier for me to do what we're going to do next. All right, next, let's see here. We want to go to the next page. We are not 
I repeat, we are not going to worry about this. There are proportions inside these triangles, but we're going to work them a little differently than that. So let's take a look at this example here. We want to solve for the value of x and the value of y. Um, what I want to do to figure that out is I first want to mark my angles. And so I have a single marked angle, I have a double marked angle, and I have my right angle. But remember, there's smaller triangles in here too. So I want to draw those. So I'm going to start here and say, all right, I've got another right triangle. This is going to be single mark. This is going to be double mark. And I've got a third right triangle. Right triangle, here's the double mark, here's the single mark. All right. We don't have labels, don't have uh, names of the vertices, so we got to be careful here. But notice that in the middle-sized triangle, so I got the big triangle, and then I'm, this is my middle-sized one. So this is my double mark, this is my right angle, so that means this must be my single marked angle. Okay, and I see in this triangle that this side between the double marked angle and the right angle is 12. So between the double marked angle and the right angle, this is going to be 12. Between the single marked angle and the right angle is y. So single marked angle and right angle is y. And then in that triangle, I don't know the length of the hypotenuse. Now looking at the small triangle. Looking at the small triangle, I see that between, well, if this is my single mark, and I see that this is my right angle, this over here must be my double marked angle. And so between the single mark and the double mark, otherwise known as the hypotenuse of that small triangle, that's gonna be x, so right there's x. And between the right angle and the single marked angle, that's four. So right angle, single marked angle, that's gonna be four. And I don't know the length of that third side, this leg here. I don't know that length. Well, actually, I take that back. I do know that length. At least I know what to call it. Between the double mark and the right angle on that small triangle, that's y. I could call it y. That may or may not help me, but there we go. Okay. So next up, last part here, is that um, looking at the big triangle, looking at the big triangle, it's going to be helpful for me to know this entire length right there, that entire hypotenuse. Well, that length is going to be 12 plus 4. Well, 12 plus 4, that's going to be 16. So that's the length of that entire side of the big triangle. Okay, so here's my setup. Once we've gone through all that work, the whole point is so that we can now solve for our variables x and y. And what we're going to do is we're going to look at two triangles at a time, but we want triangles that have the same information, meaning the same side information. Okay, so for example, looking at the two smaller triangles, I see that I know this leg. It's y. I don't know it, but I know it's y. It's something I'm looking for. And I see in the small triangle that I know 4. Okay, so those two sides correspond, y and 4. But I also know this leg, I know it's 12, and it corresponds to this leg, which I know is y. Now, the important part of this is that we have only one variable happening here, y and y. I'm not mixing variables saying x and y. I want the same variable, or preferably, I only want one variable and not everything else being numbers. But it's okay the way we have it. So I'm going to set up a proportion, and on the top of my proportion is going to go the information from one triangle. The information is y and 12. Now, on the bottom of my proportion is going to go the information from the other triangle. And I need to have it correspond, meaning y is in the same position as 4. So 4 has to go below the y. And 12 is in the same position as the y from this triangle. So y has to go below the 12. 
And so now that I have that proportion set up, now I can solve this by cross multiplying. I'm gonna take y times y, and I'm gonna take four times 12. So y times y is y squared, and four times 12 is 48. What I wanna do now is solve this. Well, I have an y squared by itself. The only way I know to solve that is to take the square root of both sides. And so y equals the square root of 48. Okay, folks, please pay attention. We gotta remember how to reduce down the square root of 48. So the first thing I do is I take 48 divided by two, which gives me 24. Now what I do is look at my list of perfect squares. So four, nine, 16, 25, 36, um, seven times seven, 49, and so on and so forth. I'm not gonna keep going, but they do keep going. 24 falls right here. So that means that I need to try these three perfect squares, 16, nine, and four. And so I'm gonna grab my calculator and I am going to take 48 divided by 16. And happily, that works out right away. So I take 48 divided by 16, that gives me three. So that means the square root of 48 breaks into the square root of 16 times the square root of three. And the square root of 16 is four. So I get four square root of three as my reduced answer. That's written in simplest radical form. Okay, so there we go. We found y. Now we can do the same thing, but this time solving for x. And again, um, I see x over here, okay, on the big triangle. So I'm going to have to use that leg and my hypotenuse, because I know my hypotenuse. So I'm going to start up with my proportion. I've got x is the leg, 16 is the hypotenuse. And I don't know the hypotenuse of that middle triangle, so I can't use it. But then if we look over here, we see we have the hypotenuse on this one, x, and the same leg, which is four. So the hypotenuse, which was 16 on the big triangle, is now x on the small triangle. And the leg, which was x on the big triangle, is now four on the small triangle. And like we did before, to solve this, we are going to cross multiply. And so x times x is x squared, and 16 times four is going to give us 64. To solve this, we wanna take the square root of both sides, and this one comes out nice. That x is gonna equal eight, the square root of 64. And there we go. All right, let's try one more. So looking at this problem, the first thing I want to do is I want to mark my acute angles, one with a single mark, one with a double mark. Then I'm going to redraw my triangles. Again, these triangles don't have to be perfect. But I have a right angle here. And the way I marked it, single mark, double mark, single mark, double mark. So again, this, I'm gonna have that be this triangle over here on the left, and this triangle, I'm gonna have that be the triangle over here on the right. Um, labeling my information. Um, looking over here between the single marked angle and what this would be my double marked angle, right? Because here's my right angle. So between the single marked angle and the double marked angle is x, so that's here. Um, between the right angle and the single mark is four. Right angle and single mark, so here's four. And between the right angle and the double mark is y, so right there's y. Looking at the other triangle, again, I have a double marked angle, a right angle, so this must be my single marked angle. And so looking at my sides, 
between the double mark and the right angle is 5. Double mark and right angle is 5. And between the right angle and the single mark is Y. So this is going to be Y right there. Okay. Next, <clears throat> we want to go through and take a look at our sides and see which sides we can find that match up with good information for us. So starting out here, um, first thing I am going to need is this entire side length for my big triangle. That's going to be 9, 4 plus 5. So then I see I know this hypotenuse, and if I look at my two smaller triangles, I see, okay, I've got a variable for that hypotenuse. So I'm going to take my proportion, and looking again at my big triangle, I see that I know this side, which corresponds then to this side on that middle triangle. So I'm going to take x and 9. That's the information from the big triangle, x and 9. And now x corresponds to 4 on that middle triangle. So I'll put 4 below. 9 corresponds to x on that middle triangle. So I'm going to put x down below. And now we cross multiply. So we get x squared equals 36. And to solve for x, we have to take the square root of both sides. And so x equals 6. There we go. We found our first variable. I need to do the same type of deal, this time looking for y. So notice that y is this middle altitude in the big triangle. So I can't use that triangle because that's not actually a side of the triangle. But if I look at the other two triangles, I see that y is right there. And that corresponds to this side over here. That's 5, so that's good. And then y is here, which corresponds to, again, 4. So I can set up my proportion. Take the information from one triangle. Again, I'm using the 4 and the y. I'm going to put it on top. So 4 and y. For the second triangle, 4 corresponds to the y, and the y corresponds to the 5. And so now my proportion is set up. I can cross multiply. y times y is going to be y squared. 4 times 5 is going to be 20. To solve this, I need to take the square root of both sides. Again, square root of 20, I've got to take 20 divided by 2, that gives me 10. So looking at my perfect squares, it starts right there, and so I've got to try 9 and 4. So 20 divided by 9, that's going to give me a decimal, it's going to give me 2 point something, I don't want that, so we can't use that one. So I'm going to take 20 divided by 4, which gives me 5, so convenient, I get the square root of 4 times the square root of 5, which is 2, the square root of 5. So that is my simplified answer.